All right, guys, so the broadcast is starting now. I guess we'll start with uh, covering some of the agenda items. Uh, if you guys go to the wiki, I did post uh, to the wiki some of the items uh, that I had in mind. Feel free to just chime in on any of the components, and if you guys have anything else to say, we could just uh, try to address that as well. Uh, for now, I'll just try to go from the top bottom, and if you guys want to jump into any of these topics, please go ahead and, and do so. Uh, so I wanted to recap, I guess, basically on the uh, basics. Uh, the logistics is that, you know, obviously the project has been renamed. Uh, there was interest by a few other parties from uh, the Linux Foundation working group for that was working on backports to essentially centralize some of this effort. Um, as it is right now, we have uh, 8211 Bluetooth Ethernet drivers uh, backported, and a Google Summer of Code student, Ozan, uh, has added DRM drivers as part of the project now. Uh, at this point, we do have a wiki uh, as part of backports.wiki.kernel.org. Uh, up and running. All the documentation is already moved onto that page. Um, and as it is right now, uh, we do have some uh, kernel.org space that was promised by uh, kernel.org maintainers uh, to allow us to make releases. Uh, as it is right now, we're targeted uh, for starting to make releases as of the 3.7 RC1 release. Uh, technically speaking, we start making public daily snapshots based on Linux Next. Uh, right now, we are using the Orbit Lab archives, but we can start moving that, and I, I will work with our kernel.org folks to see if we can start automating the release process uh, based on kernel.org. Uh, for those not familiar with uh, the process, we do ensure that we can compile against all supported vanilla kernels prior to making any source code tarball releases. This ensures that essentially anyone downloading any of the tarballs won't have any compile issues if they're using a vanilla kernel. Uh, there were some patches recently posted for REL6 support that is now merged. Um, I should mention that one of the project objectives is to trying to reduce the overhead of actually backporting. So we have been moving towards a essentially uh, standardizing the way that collateral evolutions are backported. And uh, if you want to look at one example, you can look at the 0001 netdev ops patch uh, work on that is to essentially extract the SMPL using some of Jesper's work on SPDIF and then to prove that essentially the uh, SMPL will produce the exact same type of patch that we need for that specific collateral evolution. Uh, again, that, that, that would be the first case and first example of where we actually start using SMPL for this. Uh, so um, ho hopefully for the 3.7 release that, that will actually be used uh, that the first patch. Uh, and that, that should explain why we actually have the patches laid out in the way we do. Uh, right now, um, we also have them split up by subsystems. Uh, so we have DRM uh, collateral evolutions and also networking collateral evolutions. We can split that up into further collateral evolutions if needed. Um, we do have a build server that uh, we're working towards um, uh, uh, using and sharing for anyone who's actually doing uh, development work. The reason for this is that right now we're cross-compiling against 21 Linux kernels that used to take me about 120 minutes. Uh, with a beefy server, I suspect that we can likely get this down to maybe less than 20 minutes. Um, and the reason why we need this is because every single patch we want to make sure it doesn't break the build system. Uh, then, uh, things to look out for at the Linux Plumbers Conference, uh, it was mentioned that uh, Fedora 18 uh, will actually be embracing uh, module signing. So, the alpha release for Fedora 18 is scheduled for September 11th. And I'm curious as to uh, what other Linux distributions will be doing, although I know the module signing patches, there, there seems to be two sets of patches. Fedora seems to be going to embrace one set of patches for module signing. Whether or not other Linux distributions embrace it, it will be you know, a separate topic, but it, it does seem like we need to try to address this, at least for Fedora. I'm not sure what the enterprise Linux distribution's plan on doing, but um, the implications are essentially that we likely will need to uh, address the uh, key by essentially using some of the UEFI uh, variables that are, that are allowed for us to essentially just uh, enable users to install the key there. Um, and then I should also just wanted to explain, I have two more components. Uh, 
One was the firmware updates required to getting uh, driver updates from this project. Uh, right now, we essentially require manual installation of the, of the firmware updates. Uh, and I was wondering if you guys have an idea of how to address the uh, firmware updates in a generic way. And the other thing I wanted to make sure that people understand is that even if we do have a kernel release uh, update uh, on the stable extra version releases, the implications of, a, of one simple patch, even if it, if it is a stable fix, uh, that may actually require some development work to actually backport it. And I listed on the backports.wiki.kernel.org one example commit that required such a change that was backported into v3.4.6 release of the kernel. Uh, so at this point, that's all I had to say. I was wondering if anyone has questions or anyone has any input, please go ahead and, and, and just chime in. Hey, Lewis, I had a quick question. Uh, I couldn't quite hear what you said about Fedora and Compat uh, and what was talked about at Plumbers. Could you say that again? Sure. So at Plumbers, um, um, it was um, made clear that the Linux kernel will uh, be getting module signing support. And essentially, Fedora was listed as one example Linux distribution that would be embracing uh, module signing for its release. So if you're a Fedora 18 user, at least according to what was stated at Linux Plumbers, you will require your modules for Fedora 18 to be signed. Otherwise, you won't be able to load them. Now, uh, because of, of how module signing will be deployed for Fedora 18, it seems that the key, if you essentially want to add another trusted key for building modules, you would likely need to add that as part of the UFI uh, boot variables. Uh, and you would likely need a script uh, for the user to essentially run and acknowledge that they're actually installing that key into the boot UFI variables. Now, I'm not sure exactly how Linux distributions want to go about this, but uh, it seems that some Linux distributions will be embracing it, and Fedora 18 will be the first one to do so. I'm not sure if there's an easy way to address these, these uh, concerns or issues in a generic way. One of the ideas that was uh, recommended by some of the folks um, at Linux Plumbers uh, during some of the UEFI talks uh, was likely the only option was to have Linux distributions work through built modules that were already signed by the Linux distribution, but this would mean that the users won't be compiling the modules and that you guys at the Linux distribution front would have to be providing the built modules. Uh, as it is right now, the project doesn't focus on providing built modules, but instead provides source code. There is one Linux distribution, however, that is uh, providing the built modules, and that is Canonical. Uh, they provide uh, one package that installs the backported drivers. I'm not sure if Fedora or other Linux distributions would want to embrace the same strategy, but um, uh, again, this is a distribution problem, and I just want to raise it and ensure that everyone's on, uh, at least aware about uh, Fedora's efforts and uh, the, the Linux kernel's uh, uh, strategy to embrace module signing. So, Luis, this is, this is Anne. Um, on the SUSE side, uh, one of the things that I'm kind of looking at is pulling the Compact project in and actually creating a package of it and possibly uh, getting it into OpenSUSE or something like that, so along the same lines of Canonical. So okay, great. that's kind of long-term my direction, hoping to, to go there. Um, on the signing piece, I, I don't know, I've got to go back and read all our stuff. I know we came out with some stuff lately on our plans for signing. I just haven't dug into it. Okay, no problem. The, anyone from Red Hat here present uh, that might be aware of uh, Red Hat's position on module signing, whether or not they have a strategy for addressing the backport question? No, I guess not. Well, I am from Red Hat. Oh, okay. Um, I can't say for sure. Okay. No the problem. exact strategy is whether or not we're doing it for more. We did it for yeah, I can you know, take that sort of item to go back and, and, and figure out. I do think it's important for us to understand, you know, if, if Compact still be usable on Fedora in the very near future, because I'd sure like it to be. 
Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, I guess then uh, it seems uh, it sounds like you know we have to go to the drawing board with our own teams and uh, iron out the logistics uh, of future plans. Um, and uh, is everyone aware about the effort uh, to use SMPL? Um, and are there questions regarding that? And uh, I know we have Jasper here, so I'm not sure, uh, or he was here a little while ago. How about any questions in general over the project? And any any anything that anyone would want would want to raise? Um, I have some kind of just general, well, one general question. Um, my understanding is the project. It, it makes sense to me that the project would pretty much focus on, on ensuring that it can compile for vanilla kernels. And then I would think just, you know, when I think about structure, I would think it would be like the distribution. Uh, responsibility to to try and make sure it builds for their own specific kernels. But what I'm hearing is maybe your idea is that all of those kernels would actually be pulled down and in part of the project as well, because I know you mentioned there was a, some changes made for RHEL. How do you see that working? I, I mean, do you see this notion of eventually building for 50 kernels that is every possible kernel from every possible distro kind of deal? Well, it, it really depends on the bandwidth that we have um, it, I, I'd say that adding a new kernel obviously, you know, increases the amount of time it takes to do test compilation for each atomic patch merge into any of the respective projects required for automatically backporting the kernel and the maintenance overhead. There's been a lot of pushback by some kernel developers uh, who are engaged with the project to uh, add more kernels to the list of supported kernels. Um, as it is right now, I'm happy to support uh, different Linux kernels uh, so long as we actually get someone who, who, who helps in that area. The issues with supporting more kernels really has been the fact that uh, some of the interested parties really don't exist and that we, we've essentially been supporting really ancient kernels with no users. But if we actually have users and stakeholders supporting those kernels, I think it makes sense to support it so long as we have a few folks engaged with the actual upbringing and, and, and testing uh, and, and ensuring that uh, there are uh, patches that are fixed. Uh, again, most of the work is, is automatic, but you know, there's a, at times when we do have a few deltas that do need to be addressed. Um, at times, we, we simply have had no other option but to essentially remove support for certain kernels for certain features because um, of the possibility of backporting certain changes. But at this point, I'm, I'm quite surprised about uh, with the amount of changes that we have been able to successfully backport. Um, so it really depends. If, if, if uh, there is interest, for example, to have a specific Linux enterprise uh, distribution supported as part of this project and essentially provide scripts to download those kernels, I think it makes sense so long as uh, you guys are okay with providing a binary set of uh, uh, packages that can be uh, installed in, a, in an OS agnostic manner uh, into the, the current scheme of how we download the, the vanilla kernels. Right now, again, we're using the Ubuntu PPA, which provides built pre-built kernel headers. And but these are all vanilla kernels. If there was a way to download respective enterprise uh, kernels, kernel headers, and install them as part of that process, I, I welcome that change. Uh, so long as you know there are. Uh, stakeholders monitoring and ensuring that we also don't break, the, you know, those specific kernels. I, I think adding a few kernels for distribution for other distributions might make sense, so long as it, it really doesn't provide much of, of an overhead. Um, what are really the deltas between the enterprise kernels and the vanilla kernels? Do you, do you guys know? Is is it is it a lot? Based on the REL work, I, I, it seems that it was it wasn't much work, and at least for that kernel, it seems reasonable to. To, to add it to me, so I, I'd welcome other other patches for for those kernels. If you guys want to just keep the the code to support the those kernels and not provide scripts to download your, your kernel headers and install them, that's fine too. Okay, yeah, that that's kind of the direction I was going right now, just because we kind of have a we have a build server and and I can just easily pull from your project into ours and and watch it build, you know, for our stuff too. Um, so I was going that direction, but I'm, you know, okay with also once I have all that working, submitting it back up to you. 
Yeah, that's fine. If as it is right now, um, you guys may have seen that there is a daily cron job being run, uh, and that's providing uh, statistics of uh, essentially all the failures or, or successes. Right now, it's it's succeeding to compile against all the uh, twenty one vanilla kernels. So if you want would want as part of the cron job script uh, to see whether or not it failed or, or succeeded, you could throw it in there as well. But we would just need a way for for us to download the respective package and install it in OS agnostic manner. Uh, so I welcome that, that if, if you figure out a way to, to integrate it as part of the process and, and, and get approval to provide these packages somewhere. Okay, thanks. That, mm -hmm. that helps. Um, anyone else have any other questions or anything that they'd like to address? All right. Um, so I guess uh, you know the mailing list again. You know, it's it's we have a dedicated mailing list to the project. Um, uh, I I suppose we'll be moving forward with the uh, SMPL format for uh, documenting the collateral evolutions and trying to help optimize backporting there. Um, object an objective I guess that I have as as part of the project is to eventually uh, prove that if we use SMPL to back, uh, implement collateral evolutions in the kernel. We could essentially use the inverse to actually backport those, those respective changes onto the kernel with 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 less amount of work. Uh, so just giving you guys a heads up that 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 is you know one of, one of the bigger objectives that I have with the project to try to help reduce the overhead uh, for the for the uh, uh, backport effort. All right, guys. I guess uh, it's it's one thirty. If you guys have no other questions, I suppose we'll be ending the uh, hangout now. Um, anyone else have any questions or any comments, feedback? No. Okay. Well, thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Worked well. Thanks. <laughs> Never done this before. Pretty cool. <laughs> nice. Thank you. It worked out. Thanks.